Up next, uh, we have Georgie, CEO of Hinkle Protocol, a uh, Stanford Blockchain Accelerator uh, alumni team, along with his co-founder, Dr. Corelli, um, brother, I think, um, CTO of Hinkle Protocol. All right, I'll leave it to you. Hi, everyone. Today we will talk about privacy and how to actually build business model about privacy and trading. So Hinkle is privacy protocol for on-chain trading, and we are building optimal user experience for whales. Oops. Yeah, um, since the inception of DeFi, we see that uh, more assets are shifting uh, from centralized exchanges with over 15% right now. And we see the future where most of the assets are in DeFi and privacy is a necessary step to enable this future. We interviewed over 100 liquid funds and figured out privacy con considerations for them. First is speed. ZK proof generation time is around one second. So we should exclude funds that try to uh, arbitrage strategies uh, in, in milliseconds. Cost is a second consideration, so ZK proof verification and infrastructure cost some money. Therefore, we focus on liquid funds and big uh, trading experience. Next, anonymity set, which is a product of TVL, number of active transactions, and transaction size. Higher is TVL, better user experience for funds. And the last point is additional yield to justify smart contract risk of putting assets into shielded address. First trading strategy where privacy is very much needed is fundamental long-term yield. Based on our interviews, over 10% of all TVO is constituted by this strategy. With all these factors and criteria being either low or medium importance because of long-term focus of the strategy. These funds, um, some of them are managed account funds, and what they do is they do swaps liquidity provision, staking, and different you know, vari variables of yield farming. So it's a long-term strategy where speed and cost uh, doesn't impact as much. Anonymity set and additional yield plays a role, but they need privacy to shield uh, from first their LPs so they can justify their performance fee. And second, from uh, other participants on the market so they can not copy trade them. This is the biggest need uh, that we identified. The next strategy, which is almost the opposite, is tax to dex arbitrage. So um, this happens when you have two assets, both on centralized exchange and dex. And then when you see asymmetry, you, you execute the opposite trades on both. All criteria have significant impact here, except cost. Because of the volume and the size of the trade, uh, gas fees and unexpected slippage is usually a very small fraction from the total trade. Therefore, while speed, anonymity set, and additional yield plays crucial roles. Though most of the market is here now, and this is our next step to make the significant improvement. The next big category that have grown uh, a lot over the past few months is institutional staking. So institutions, uh, don't really care about speed and cost because it's a long-term strategy. But what is important factor is additional yield because they get around 4 or 5% now from staking. And uh, if you offer them additional yield, you can justify smart contract risk with this yield, but then your TVL increases. This is a very big, big category that we pay a lot of attention. And the last one is liquidations, so hiding intent. This is not only crypto hedge funds, but also uh, venture capital firms. Um, anonymity set has this, uh, the biggest impact here. While uh, this is a very solvable problem, so anonymity set has higher impact if they accumulate assets on their public Ethereum wallet and then transfer to the shielded address. And then because these tokens are usually illiquid, it becomes obvious who is liquidating them even through shielded address. Though this can be solved if accumulation happens directly on a shielded address, so no one can actually understand who is accumulating these assets and then liquidating. And we are solving for this too. 
In order to facilitate all four strategies, we have built self-service DApp plus SDK, where users create short address, and then we have built integrations with all major DApps and all functions. So users can swap, stake, provide liquidity, and uh, you know, do whatever they are doing without introducing new friction points. Uh, we KYC all users to make sure institutions uh, participating there uh, are not subject to any you know, counterparty risk and they, their funds are not commingled with any sanctioned or any type of illicit funds. And this is an important step, especially for more conservative institutions. I'm passing over, Nika. Hello, everyone. Uh, next, we'll talk about Hinkle contribution towards privacy. So first of all, it's uh, integration with existing DeFi infrastructure, and it's irrelevant if infrastructure is history, state dependent, or state independent. I will talk about this in the next slide. Second, it's extensible relayer software. We allow relayers to charge different modes, fixed pricing, variable pricing, MEV protection modes, uh, bundling transactions together, so uh, freedom for relayers, and no relay overhead cost, meaning that any uh, additional yield that comes to relayer because of unexpected payoff goes back to the user. Mm -hmm. This is important for big clients. And fourth, it's extensibility of contracts using hooks, uh, which allows additional functionality as customization of strategy based on the needs of the liquid funds, uh, multi-send functionality to send uh, simultaneously in the same transaction within the pool or outside pool, and custom reward conditions for uh, bigger funds to prevent uh, fund loss or inefficient investment. <coughs> About the structure of our protocol, so it consists of three main pillars. First one is non-upgradable main contract, which governs balance changes. And uh, the main condition there is that you cannot create any value inside the contract if it doesn't, so it's, it's not supported with inflow or outflow of tokens. Second uh, pillar is the uh, relayer network. Relayer network with different MOFT, with MEV protection, with uh, different uh, pricing. And uh, relayers are essentially transmitting transactions of the users over the network. Uh, and uh, the third important pillar is the external actions. Uh, there are two approaches here. Either you pass uh, encode the transaction towards pro protocol directly or you create a kind of module which integrates to the main contract, which was the second approach because it allows for higher flexibility. I will talk about this uh, in the next slide. And uh, <coughs> when a user wants to swap stake or uh, do any liquidity provision, he generates uh, ZK proof is his shielded private key that he owns enough funds, passes it to the relayer, and relayer submits it to the network. One thing to add about uh, KYC, there may be questions here. So user once passed KYC at uh, subsequent steps, every time proofs in ZK that he passed without revealing his true identity. So privacy in this respect is preserved. Uh, let's talk about two types of external actions. Uh, first one is uh, stateless external models, and second external models that involve state. So uh, first example about stateless external model, you can think about Uniswap. When you swap in Uniswap, your current payoff doesn't depend on your previous payoffs. So you get exactly the same amount uh, in the current period. And uh, this is an easy case managed also uh, with different protocols. And um, external actions are stateless. It doesn't require any state to hold. Uh, the interesting case and much needed for liquid funds is uh, external actions which require previous state. So uh, to think about this, uh, you can think about uh, CRV token claims, which depends on your previous LP holdings in the curve pool. So your current payoff depends on how long you hold this asset previously and also amount of this asset. And this case is harder and we are solving this case and I will cover the main trade-off that user faces in this case. When user wants to claim his CRV tokens, 
Uh, essentially, he needs to prove that previously he had some amount of LP tokens staked in the pool. This in turn creates a link between the two transactions of the users. So in this case, in this case he's sacrificing th with this link, but for outsiders still uh, it's anonymous. Uh, it comes from unknown address. So this is the main trade-off. Uh, second case is uh, of state dependency is interest accrued tokens. Uh, there are two cases where token value increases, you can think about LP tokens for Curve, or uh, token amount increases, you can think about our token. And uh, for, uh, for liquid funds, uh, it's important to have this kind of token because essentially it's a basis for income generation, passive income generation. Uh, we handle this, uh, uh, and the problem with interest accrued token is the fact that they contradict UTXO model used in privacy protocol because UTXO assumes fixed amount of token. Uh, we're solving this problem with a uh, wrapped uh, interest accruing token within our protocol, which take a factor of scale. So for the user who mints this token, his balance stay fixed, but at the same, at the same time, the amount of tokens in the pool is increasing. And when the user wants to make some transaction, some swap or withdrawal from the pool, these tokens are unwrapped and all the amount of tokens, including interest, is delivered to the user. Uh, third important uh, feature that we have is about unexpected relay cost and its accounting. So essentially what happens when a uh, user submits transaction, he should know about token change amounts in the, during the time he generates proof before he submits transaction. This creates unexpected payoffs, for example, unexpected price change. If somebody before you submitted transaction in the same pool, let's say, or unexpected gas cost when you went through different route in the smart contract, or very general case, if any parameters of smart contract changed within the block. <coughs> and uh, we are solving this problem by introducing temporary shielded address where user submits each time uh, different his temporary shielded address and commitment in the pool are created during the transaction execution time. Um, I, I would like to talk about uh, generally relay network and the effect of relay network design on privacy in more general terms. So uh, uh, the main trade-off here occurs between full decentralization of the layer network and uh, privacy of the pool. Let's imagine that uh, pricing can be different for, and the layer can construct any software. He can choose any MEV protection mode and bundling of transaction and other parameters. But it essentially creates heterogeneity between the layers. So, uh, for example, if you are if you're doing arbitrage, you will go to the relayer who has higher MEV protection and also higher cost. But if you're a liquid fund, you don't care much about MEV protection and you will go to lower fixed cost. So uh, this separation of users between different relayers, in fact, create information problem because choice of relayer is information revealing. So you reveal some information when you choose relayer. So uh, the main trade-off here is that uh, user, uh, w you know, when you decentralize the layer network completely, it creates so much heterogeneity that essentially it's information revealing and one should be very careful when designing the constraint on client. And the last point I would like to emphasize is extensibility of the contract based on hooks. So uh, users, let's say liquid funds have their own preferences with respect to strategy. May, they may combine the strategy in like um, borrowing from others and depositing to cure, then swapping back to and repaying our debt. And uh, the strategies may be very complex. So hooks allow clients to inject his own strategy. So uh, smart contracts uh, have this flexibility. Second thing uh, important for liquid funds is multi-send, so it uh, sends uh, multiple LP providers within the same transaction within the pool or outside the pool. And the third one is the custom checks after swap or staking. You can imagine that you swap, uh, you swap die and 
you also check that uh, USD, USDC didn't depend more than 2%. So clients can have any revert conditions within the contract, which guarantees that they don't lose money with some unexpected risk. And the last point, we are hiring, so please reach out to Giggles on Telegram, um, and happy to answer questions. So uh, generally, uh, you can think about uh, when you have a public address, is uh, just point on elliptic curve, but our temporary addresses it two points of an elliptic curve, one that generates the other, and user can essentially randomize through all these addresses. And we use uh, something similar to elliptic, integrated elliptic curve scheme li with little twinkle. We can talk maybe in detail after. So for the hooks, for example, uh, use case, one of the use cases is multi-send. Instead of like sending to the, each person in separate transaction, you can send every your LP in the same transaction. So just one of the use cases. You mentioned Draper? Uh, revert, yeah. So by revert means that uh, there can be some conditions which uh, are predetermined by the hedge fund or by liquid fund, uh, which uh, some unexpected conditions that are not under your control, like for example, USDC DPEG, like more than 2%, and uh, hedge fund have this uh, interest of reverting transaction if some events occur during the transaction. Thank you. Right, thanks everyone.